So the session starts with an eminent professor, Dr. K. Muthicharian, sir, Pro Vice Chancellor of DSU, to deliver the topic titled Assessment, Accreditation, Need for Higher Education Institutions. The session is over to you, sir. Happy to see you all for the, the assessment accreditation, the FDP program. And my sincere thanks goes to the, the principal who has given me the chance. And also, uh, I say it's a, a wonderful opportunity also uh, to talk about the, the need of assessment and accreditation higher education institutions. So India as one of the, the largest and diverse education system in the world. The privatization and then widespread the expansion, the increased autonomy, which including the introduction of the various programs in the new or the, the traditional areas, which always has improved the access to the higher education. So the widespread concern on is the number one, whatever the program or whatever the subjects we are introducing into the higher education system, the quality. The quality, I think, is most important, which relevance to the higher education. To address this concern, the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, we call as the NAC, was formed. So here, the higher education the system, as I mentioned in India, is a long history. It has a traditional history of that since from the, the Gurukulas period and then followed by Buddhists. And then we have the, the other we call as the madrasas. All the, as a later after the, the colonization of the British group, we started the, the most the signified the universities, the modern institution of the higher education in 1857. So first three universities were formed with the help of the, the late the British and one in the Mumbai, another one in Madras and our third is the Calcutta. This has been later been called as in the, the University of Bombay, the University of Madras and then University of Calcutta. So these are the first three higher education institutions in terms of the university has started. And now, I think professionally, the higher education in India has been flourished like anything. And currently, we have 900 universities, 900 universities, which includes the central universities, state universities, private universities, and deemed to be universities in the national. And then also, we have the institutions of the the national importance such as IIT, IIBM, and IAC, and etc. So currently, we have adding more than 40,000 colleges, 40,000 colleges in the Indian subcontinent, which includes the, the affiliated, the constituent, the autonomous, and public aided and private, etc. We have in the among the 40,000 colleges. So in all together, in the 900 universities, and 40,000 colleges, we have more than 25 million students, according to the source of the University Grants Commission. And currently, they are pursuing the, the higher education. So the higher education is the concurrent list of the, the union government here. And the national and provincial the governments are the, we call as the state governments, have a role of play in this sector. So higher education mostly is in public domain, 80% publicly funded and 20% privately funded. There are different the types of the higher education institutions in size with reference to the, the resources and then system of the governance and the ownership. So who are all the, I mean, making the quality assurance and making the standards and which agencies are responsible for the 900 universities and 40,000 colleges in India? So we have number one is the National Assessment and Accreditation Council, we call NAC, situated in Bangalore, which was established by, uh, by UGC under the MSRD ministers uh, in 1994. So what is the, the domain of activities? 
the main purpose or the mandate of the national assessment recognition council nac which will have the assessment the quality assurance agency uh, of the higher education institutions or the and then institutional programs and accreditation and second accrediting body is the national board of accreditation the first one will be mainly for the art science and humanities uh, and which includes in the 900 universities and 40000 colleges and again the second one is the national board of accreditation we call it shortly nba again which is established by aicte in 1994 and main purpose of the uh, this agency nba is to i mean accredit the, the technical education so the program accreditation mainly here and third one is the accreditation board again other than the i mean the normal the technical and then other the art science and humanities the institutions now this is exclusively for the agricultural sciences so this the accreditation body we call the ab which was established in 2002 i mean under the i mean the ags of the icar and mainly it accredit the agricultural education in the agriculture universities and colleges which includes the program and institutional accreditation and fourth one is the the distant education council we call the dec so again which is established during 1991 and established under the ages of the the igno so this igno the dec will mainly will accredit the the uh, colleges and universities which is related to the distant education so mainly the program and institutional accreditation so these are the currently four accrediting body which are in active in in india so here now i would like to mention more about the what is the role of the the national assessment and accreditation council we call as a nac so the outcome of the national policy on education realizing after nbe we call the nbe 1986 and peers of the academies they met and they made a program of action in 1992 and mainly to i mean establish an independent authority an independent statutory body of the accreditation agency called nac so under the the adin policy of that one uh, the nac was established in 1994 which is again is an independent as i mentioned autonomous body by the ugc of the mhrd so the main mandate of the nac is making quality assurance so altogether main purpose or the objective is to make the quality assurance an integral part of the functioning of the any higher education institutions so again the structure of the nac is come governed by the what you call the executive committee we call the ec and then the general council gc so these are the two council which have been here the governance of the the nac so in addition to that we have also the representatives from the mhrd ugc and institutions of the higher education in its both of the the executive committee and the general committee and general council so this is this both the council and finally after submitting the the nac report or the, the evaluation the, these two bodies has to i mean approve the or uh, the quality i mean of the the various institutions in terms of the the accreditation so what is the the vision of the nac the vision of the nac to make the quality as i mentioned and the defining element of the the higher education in india to a a combination of the the self and the external the external quality evaluation promotion and the sustenance of the initiatives so this is the, the main vision of the the nac so what are the various mission of the nac so the lot of the the standards has been set as the mission of the nac so mainly to arrange the, the periodic assessment and accreditation of the institution so here the periodic and the the assessment and accreditation of the higher education institutions like colleges and the universities so nightly we are focused for the 5 years so 5 years of the tenure again 
uh, as the overall growth of the the five years will be assessed uh, in this the assessment accreditation period. And then also we used to, I mean NAC used to assess the specific academic program or sometimes the projects also. And second mission of the NAC is to stimulate the academic environment to, I mean, trigger the academic environment for promotion of the, the quality of the teaching, the quality of the teaching, learning, and research in higher education institution. And third is the, to encourage the self-evaluation. As I mentioned in my, uh, the presidential talk, the self-evaluation is most important. And then accountability, autonomy, and innovation. What innovation has been created for the students in their own higher education institution, that is college and uh, the university. And then fourth is to undertake the, the quality related studies. The quality related studies which uh, assembles the research, consultancy and the training programs which includes the present FDP program also. So to collaborate with other stakeholders or higher education institution, again to ensure the, the quality, I mean the evaluation, promotion and the sustenance. So what are the core value of the, the NAC? It mainly contributes what the national development altogether. The better in the output in terms of the, the quality graduation. So and then fostering the global competence, competence among the, the students. So that has to have been created in that. So top the institution, the top university or the top college among the global level that we have to create among the students. Then inculcating altogether a value system among the students. So it's a value system should be adopted and thereby to produce the, the worthful the citizen in academic. So that is most important. That's why always our the late Prime Minister, I mean the President, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam used to mention that our mandate of the higher education institution should not be yeah, and an incubator, just producing the yak and, and then producing the chip. It should be a, a producible one in terms of the quality of the students. So what will citizens to be developed from the higher education institution that was a, always used to mention in every meeting among the students. And what together is promoting the use of the, the technology and quest for the, the excellence. So what is the, the source of the here is the contributing to the national development. So the national the NAC has a main role in the assessment and accreditation process and looks into the, the ways of the, the various colleges and universities responding to or contributing towards the, the national the development that is most important. And second is as I mentioned the fostering the global competence among the, the students. So the accreditation process of the NAC examines the role of higher education institution in preparing the students, in bringing the students to achieve the core competencies, to create the core competence among the students to face the challenges of the, the global level. And then also uh, this will require the all the, uh, the higher education institution be innovative, be creative, be entrepreneurial, be in their approach to ensure what the skill oriented. Always we used to address uh, to the institution develop this skill oriented program for the, the employability. So altogether to achieve this target, the higher education institution established a collaboration that always the institution should have a collaboration with industry institution linkage. And then we call it the industry linkage and with the, the, with the neighborhood agencies and educational institution. So making that the world of the, the skilled world and the world of the the competent learning. And third is the, as I mentioned, inculcating a value system. So the value system means the students should imbibe the appropriate value commensurate with social, cultural, economic, and environmental realities by, I mean, creating a good system among the, the students. And then promoting the use of the technology. So the technology, it means the latest updated technology of the every way in science, engineering, including the electronic way that should be created uh, in the college. And then finally, it goes to the, the student's level. So what type of the electronic data management system 
and then electronic resources and their access to the internal, both external, the stakeholders, particularly the student community should be given. So all together, the, the quest for excellence. So the quest for excellence. See, this quest for excellence could start with the assessment or uh, even earlier by the establishment of the, the steering committee for the preparation of the self-study report of the, the institution. So that is more important. I will tell you that what are the essential components of the various SSR to be prepared and request for the excellence. So the assessment and accreditation of the higher education institution, as I mentioned, is a globalization, the liberalization, which has influenced the, the Indian higher education system in a big way. And that's why we adopted this one. And this ANA process is the, the beginning to bring in uniform quality, uniform quality throughout the India, so north to south, and then west to east all, and positions in the higher education in such a way, in such a way, and these institutions should address more directly what the quality provision and express the needs of the, the stakeholders, the, the students and the, the parents. So the main focus of the, the NAC assessment, uh, assessment is the, what number one is the quality initiative. So what are the quality initiatives taken by the, the higher education institutions, whether it is a college or the, the university? And then what are the quality sustenance they have? And what is the quality enhancement? So these are the three mandras of the NAC assessment, which relies behind the accreditation process. So the NAC which always will involve the combination of both to ensure this quality initiative, a self-evaluation and plus the external peer evaluation by the external members from the, uh, the NAC, the process as we call as the the peer team. So both together, which have a success of the the what the assessment accreditation for every institution, and this will contribute in promoting the what the objectivity and then self analysis, reflection, and the professionalism on part of the higher education institution. That is the main focus of the the NAC, and then also which involves the participation. So here. I think uh, it has been very clearly mentioned by NAC in the, the manuals for the self-study. They, I mean, they, I mean uh, they proclaim that the participation, participation of the, all the stakeholders, stakeholders with the management, with the faculty members, with, I mean, administrative staff, students, parents, employees, and then community, including the alumni of the institution, they have to take care of the, the assessment accreditation and thereby and contributing to the, the overall quality of the, the particular institution. So, and in not only that, after that, we have to take care of, care of the, the major contributions of the NAC after the post accreditation activities, which also have been taken role by the, I think, internal quality assurance. So, it, I think the assessment and then accreditation once over, I think it is a duty of the IQSC to make the, the sustenance of the the quality in their institutions. So, as I mentioned, why we need the accreditation by the NAC or out of the agencies? So, what are the various benefits of the accreditation? So, the institution to know its strengths, the strength of their own college in terms of the academic program and that are almost all the, the criteria of the, uh, the benchmark of the, the quality of the every institution. And what are the weakness and then opportunities? Once we know this one, knowing the strength and knowing the weakness, and what are the opportunities that can be, I mean, initiated uh, to the every institution, I mean, informed to the institution, and thereby improve their the standard of the, the quality in their own college or the university. And then identification of the internal areas of planning and resource allocation. How much in terms of the the resources available with that how best we can develop the institution and then collegiality of the the collegiality of the, the campus and then funding agencies funding agencies look for objectives of data for performance funding from the various external resources for i mean doing the active research to create the research ambience in the their own 
the higher education institution and then also to initiate the innovative and modern methodology of the teaching pedagogy and then modern teaching pedagogy which includes all the, the teaching methodology and how best we can improve with the help of the, the, the technology we call as the ICT, ICT is source of the teaching and new sense of direction and identify for the institution and then later the society look for the reliable information on the quality education offered in the particular college. So I think now as mentioned by uh, my senior colleague here, so I think before to enter into any college or university, now the students community or the, the stakeholders, now they are looking for the, the brochure and what it contains inside the college, whether as in the college as the ample and the ambience of the teaching, learning, conducive environment happened in the college. So everything has been now has been looking uh, by the stakeholders, including the, the students. And finally, the employability. So through the, the accreditation, the employers look for the reliable information on the quality of the education offered in their the particular college or the institution. And then intra and inter the institutional interactions. So these are all the, uh, the benefits of the accreditation by the next visit to every college to make the institution as a high profile base and who are eligible and which institutions are eligible. So what is the eligibility criteria and before going for the accreditation uh, by the NAC in the higher education institution. So number one, at least seek this is a recent one, recent of the April 2020-20, they revised this guideline and uh, the eligibility criteria. So what they emphasize by the NAC is one, at least six years of the existence since the inception of the higher education and the institution. So six years of the, uh, the age should attain and number or, or at least two batches have graduated from the, the higher education institution, from the college or the university. At least two successful, the graduation should come out from the institution. So these are the two basic fundamental requirement for the the eligibility condition for the accreditation of a college or the institution. So I think this is must and before to go to the, the NAC, I think we have to see that whether we have, I mean, completed either six years or two years of the, the their own degree, either UG degree or the, the PG degree. And then, uh, then later you have to come back at a later stage to meet the eligibility criteria and are eligible to apply for the accreditation. So next is the documents. So what are the documents, essential the documents which are required for the accreditation of the institution? So what are the, the, the essential ones we have to submit to the, the NAC for the, the eligibility in criteria? So letters to affiliation, letter from the affiliating university. So I think we have to get from the affiliating university that all the programs, all the courses we are conducting should be a bit endorsed and affiliated by the corresponding affiliating university. And number two, the latest recognition or approval letter from the, the statutory regulatory authority, we call AACT or MCA, and with respect to the engineering and the health allied courses. And then third is the UGC 2F and 12B recognition certificate along with the latest plan general development grant release letter from the UGC. This should be attached when we are going for the accreditation. And letter from the UGC regarding award of the Center for Potential of Excellence or University with Potential for Excellence letter. And then for autonomous colleges, UGC letter conferring the, the autonomous status. So this should be a, a letter should be attached. And then proof of uploading all India survey of higher education, the certificate, if you have. And you change the name. Suppose you change the name or change the, the nomenclature of the your college, submit the approvals of the relevant authorities, universities, approved by the UGC, MHRD, and your affiliating university. And then approval of the UGC, MHRD, state government for establishment of the university, if you are comes under the university category. And then AIU or other governmental agencies approval for the standalone institution for the MBA program and so on. And then upload your the I mean AQ 
area in the website so as to provide the URL details which will be available in the uh, in the websites of the NAC. So all together, all the rules and regulations of the I mean self declaration we have to give by the I mean uh, with reference to the state government UGC operating university and other applicable SRE in the format provided by the the NAC. And then finally, a self declaration. A self declaration with respect to the, the affiliation status in the format provided by the NAC. So these are the essential documents which are required for the accreditation process. Now, how an institution is accredited and what are the various criteria and key aspects for the assessment? So the NAC has identified with the peers of the experts in various fields. They have identified the seven criteria to serve as the basis for the assessment of the assessment accreditation of the higher education institution, which includes colleges and universities. So these are the seven criteria. Number one, the curricular aspects, and then teaching, learning, and evaluation, research, innovation, and extension, infrastructure and learning resources, student support and progression, governance leadership and management and the seventh is the institutional values and the best practice so before go i'm going for it you have to submit a, a report because ssr and based on all these seven criteria and what are all you are having in your with reference to the curriculum the teaching learning practices what are the research the facilities etc all i think all the seven criteria has to and updated and uploaded in the in the format given by the, the NAC. Now we will go by, one by one what it indicates the curricular aspects. So mainly the curricular aspects which illustrates about the, the curricular design and development and it's separate for the university and autonomous the colleges and then curricular planning and implementation and what are the flexibility you have in the academics uh, to the students whether you have the choice based credit system in the I mean in your system and then you have also other flexibility in the choosing of the electives and inter and intra departmental electives you have and then curriculum enrichment how best your curriculum is suit to the students for the employability of the the, the stakeholders i think whether the curriculum is need to the i mean suit to the need of the international level and then these always should be ensured and curriculum should be every once in every three years should be updated and finally, we have to get the feedback from the nearly 10 stakeholders, starts from the, the students, then about the teachers, and then about the college, about the governance of the, the institution. And then also you have to see that whether the students are workful to the employability, that we have to get it from the, the employers, and then also alumni and the parents too. So I think we have nearly 10 questions are now available in the net and all together so the diversity and academic flexibility aspects on career orientation multi skill development and involvement of the stakeholders in the curriculum updation and also the the cast under these criteria is even i mean all together even i mean taken for the uh, the assessment in the first criteria criteria number two so here the teaching, learning, and evaluation. So it deals with the efforts of the institution to serve the students of the different backgrounds and abilities through the effective teaching, learning experiences. What you have. So it mainly what type of the, the learning practice you have been given and what type of the teaching methodology we have been taken and whether we have a think tank, a methodology, investigation, and then how we have been doing that either by interviews or among the group discussion or the focus group discussion debates projects presentations experiments in terms of the laboratory and then practicum internship and application of the ict so what modern technology you have been using for teaching apart from your the regular the chalk and the blackboard methodology are important consideration in this teaching learning evaluation so here, in addition to that, we have been also been seeing that how the students are enrolled and how you are, I mean, you are focusing your, your enrollment through various means, through advertisements and then publicity. 
of your college and stating your college has been already have been importing the higher quality education uh, by obtaining a good grade earlier and then profile of the students then what are the various like the students diversity and where you are whether you have been within your area or within your nearby area or from the neighboring i mean district or neighboring state or neighboring country i think students diversity should be maintained here for the good diversity for the the evaluation in the criteria too and what are the various teaching learning process offered and also they have to see the teacher quality whether the, the teachers are having the the quality as prescribed by ugc whether you are called when the teachers are having the quality in terms of the minimum standard of the the quality for the the appointment whether you are following that for phd so phd is more than most essential for the basic requirement or you have to pass in the the nationalized the examination conducted by the nation or ugc or the csr or by the state government so then what are the evaluation process and reforms how the students have been evaluated by the examination and then the students performance and then the learning outcomes the students satisfaction survey so the performance after the examination learning of the rejected has to assess and we have to compare with the the standards of the either the affiliating university or comparing with your neighboring college all we have to see that how the students are performing based on you are the teaching in your institution so finally we have to now is very very important to assess in the criteria as the student satisfaction survey i think we have a lot of the informations are available in the student satisfaction survey i will come in the next slides the next is the third criteria the research innovations and extension so i think now here the affiliating college has been i mean differentiated in ug and pg so we are never considered for the according to the recent uh, are uh, the criteria and the ugc based college is not been given mass test for the research but the pg college is given for the research input and the university of course and full in the research innovation and extension so this deals with the the facilities provided made by the institution to promote the, the research culture the research laboratory and then all together we have a lot in terms of what are the, the resources i mean given given this the promotion of the the research in the particular higher education institution and then how they resources are mobilized mobilized from various how the management is supporting for the teachers to ensure the the quality research inside the college at the university or how they are the motivating the the teachers to get the funding from the extra mural sources from the national agencies or from the international agencies and then what are the research facilities the laboratories and then other the equipments available modern equipments available to pursue the the basic research and apply research in, in your institution so based on the research the publications how this you are both the students and the faculties are publishing their innovative things in the form of a publication in the scopus scopus i mean index the journals and then with having all the citations and then the indexes h index i10 i10 the index values of the your publication that will boon your your college or institution i mean created a well among the other institution in a high profile way and then awards how many awards you have in terms of the both the national international and then also the state awards awarded by the the government agencies or the the other the private agencies and then next is the as a consultancy and the the collaborations both together how far this your institution have been collaborating for the research with reference to the uh, various uh, uh, the colleges institution and then industries and then also other the world of the institutions so for the internship so many colleges and many universities now have been collaborating with the neighboring countries for the internships they are allowing the students to go abroad and have the internship there and finally they will get a boon for either they can improve their their life skills uh, of the uh, of their the host institution and then later they can get a higher education or the the employability in the other country so thereby 
the consultancy and collaboration of the altogether have a meaningful for the students in the accreditation of the innovation system and finally the extension activity how best the institution have been taking role in the, the social responsibility in in this in the country or in, in your area so this will have a more input for how best your students are involving the nss ncc and then ORC. so similar way that and then also adopting a village and how best your knowledge has been I mean, useful to the the the, the land because of the lab to lab program how many programs you are conducting for which how much awards you've got for the recognition of your outstanding service in the extension activities and institutional social responsibility so all together this day these three uh, the category is very very important i think uh, as far as our experience most of the institutions has to get low grades or low points only for this type of the research and third criteria i think we used to always the emphasize said that you have to concentrate more on the the criteria three for all these things so that are why i think we have to give more input for the the criteria three of our research and fourth is the infrastructure and learning resources and here mainly what are the adequacy and optimal use of the facilities available in your institution for conducive learning and then doing the practice of the the laboratory so here it requires information how every constituent of the institution for example the students teachers and staff benefit from the the facilities what you have in this so here i, I think we have to meet the the facilities not only for the present and also for the future and all together what are the physical facilities physical facilities mean the classroom how much your classrooms are equipped with the all the teaching arrangements and then for seating arrangements and then how best you have the uh, or your uh, classrooms having the the it infrastructure we call the smart classrooms smart classroom facilities for learning the, the resources other than your as a traditional method of learning and then how you are maintaining the the campus a green campus even we have to analyze the the green audit of the campus and then also we used to analyze the the energy audit of the campus of it all together the campus should be clean and eco-friendly by adopting the various the technologies and again the, the second is most important is the library so library is a learning resource <clears throat> how much your library has been equipped and with modern including the ebooks and then now the facilities have been provided by the UGC in Flipnext and also the various South Ganga projects. So how the institutions you have I mean, having the facilities for learning the your books, both are the what we call as the, the hard and soft copies of the, the books availability in your college or the, the university. And then also we used to look at the visitors. I think every college should see the visitors of the both the students and faculties visiting in a library that also will be taken account uh, in the uh, the criteria of the assessment and then fifth is the student support and progression how the students acquire the meaningful experience for learning at the campus is most important here so what type of the uh, tech i mean uh, the mentoring support have been given to the students and what type of the mentoring activities have been helped and whether you have all the the student benefit uh, uh, the i mean cells and centers you know for doing the active participation of their learning uh, in the their own college and uh, universities and then later we will perform the students progression after graduation how many students are entering uh, into the higher education and how many of them are going for the abroad and then how many of them are going for research and how many of them are starting their own entrepreneurship program in their own skills so this all will be studied in the student progression and then student participation and activities as i mentioned which includes all the extracurricular activities which include the sports the nss ncc and then all the other activities not only that also the participation in the the national parade of the, of the republic day and then also participation of the 
you are the local or the in, in the government the participation all will be considered in the student support and preservation of the criteria and sixth is the governance leadership and managing management which is mainly for the the practice of the institution how the college and the university is planning the, the, the limited human resources and then requirement training performance appraisal and then financial management and the overall the leadership in the institutional building has been assessed i think what are the various strategy they used i mean they developing and deploying are uh, in their own college or universities and then how the faculties are recruited as i mentioned with just the minimum standard of the the qualification as required for the teaching in their own college and then how they are managing the the mobilization of the resources and finally how all these systems have been having uh, individually what type of the vision and what type of the mission and what type of the leadership they have in their own college to lead the, the their own college and university to way forward further as compared to the the world level and compared to the international universities and for in terms of the the quality and the sustenance of the the assessments so and finally is the internal quality assurance system every college should have a, a system we call it the internal quality assurance system the main the purpose of the iqas or self regulated the responsibility of the every institution and it is it will give you for the continuous improvement of the quality and achieving academic excellence in their own college and again this should be very very mandatory for every institution and this will be again this the iqas should monitor academically by auditing by auditing it means by auditing by our by their own as a peers of the group and then also external auditors those who are already taken part in the assessment activities should invite and know the your strength your weakness and your opportunities and then also what are the challenges ahead for building the institution in a high profile way in a high quality so for this every institution out of the the quality management strategies in all the academic and administrative aspects so all together the income and expenditure of the institution are subject to the regular internal and external audit as i mentioned so this is the the functional of the iqas itself what it has to take is main role as i mentioned regular meetings should be conducted on iqas and again the iqas is one of the statutory of the body for the quality assurance system in the every college and this should be a composition and the composition should be as mentioned by the nac and ugc and it should be represented by all the heads of the department students representative and then alumni representative parents representative and then also the industry institution linkage partnership so all together now every every individual of the stakeholder should be take part in the iqac and then here and uh, i by the iqac every year they have to submit the annual quality assurance report iqac to nec and then coordination of the cells. i think i will tell what are the cells or centers to be developed in every higher and feedback system should be as i mentioned there are 10 feedback posters are available as mentioned by the mac that was to assess and then academic administrative audit should be conducted every year that should be uploaded in the, uh, the websites of the own college and you know and then at least minimum the two quality enhancement workshops <coughs> to be organized in every institution per year every year and in addition to that the nac in sensitization program for the students teachers administrative staff parents alumni stakeholders i think we have to conduct the why we need of this nac as a quality as a student system in every uh, college or in university that has to give the awareness to the students and the other stakeholders and then iqs seminar should be conducted among the teachers administrative staff regarding the projects industry linkage publication administration including 
the ipr related issues workshops and finally and also we have to think not only the nac and also every year we have to involve or at least participate in the nirf ranking and iso certification for the uh, the quality sustenance in every institution so these are all the, the targets of the iqs system and i think this is most important every college and institution should have the the capability enhancement and development schemes with reference to cells and centers should be here number one i think iqsc is the overall the backbone we call it the pillar of the, uh, the institution and then alumni association registered alumni association the guidance for the competitive examination career counseling professional development remedial coaching language laboratory and then bridge courses in the early periods yoga and meditation personal calling counseling students grievance letter council anti racking committee sexual harassment committee as it, sorry anti sexual harassment committee and then green audit energy audit and then also most important by the ugc mention is the swayam mooc and development of e content so at least minimum youtube lectures should be created for every subject by the faculties who are teaching in the classes incubation center or innovation center uh, very good information management information system then code of conduct book for the every at uh, the college then nss red cross women resources documentary repository ipsl and every subject or the program should have a one at least center of excellence students perception feedback and then research council so nearly 26 uh, are the development schemes should be developed is a mandate to every institution so institution displays sensitivity to discuss all the, the climate change and environmental issues adopt the environment friendly practices in every one this is the last step the seventh criteria what action we have been taken as a for the green audit energy audit in terms of the energy conservation what are the best practices for every institution having in the eco friendly activities like rain water harvesting waste recycling carbon neutral and so on so this also carries yeah, a maximum weightage in the criteria of these seven and then you have to identify that what are the best practices they have been doing in your colleges that you have to identify and based on the creativity innovation and the improving quality of the, the education in particular college and then institutional uh, distinctives so the practice of the institution leading to improvement and having the, the visible impact what impact is that as far as the quality of the institutional provisions are to be considered so this is most important for the, the criteria so all these criteria seven criteria have been have been very well been addressed i think we have to take each and even your micro data all together they have to collect it and then we have to save it both in the soft and then also in the hard form in the country uh, in the in the institutions and then only so we can let we can submit through the uh, the online submission uh, either by uh, in the, the soft copy or the hard copy now it has been met, mandated in the student satisfaction survey we call as the triple s i think this also the students perception also now the nrs i mean the nac uh, is been seriously viewing and this should be conducted normally we have to give all the students profile of the uh, with reference to the name their standard of uh, the i mean uh, the living and everything there and then also their uh, the personal data including the email and then uh, the, their uh, the mobile numbers should be given and for the colleges i think responses should be received at least 10% of the student population or 100 whichever is lesser that we have to submit and for universities 10% of the student population or 500 whichever is lesser this will be regularly will be i mean doing for every accreditation in colleges and through the online through the online so we have to provide the entire database of the students with email mobile numbers and at the time of filling of the online ssr report and the nac will assess from the the i mean the domain itself i think they will contact the as i mentioned the percentage and they will contact the student 
and they have to give the opinion, the perception of your college for the uh, the accreditation. So this will be completed within one month after the its uh, initiation. So what the net net are uh, the new assessment outcome which emphasizes earlier the only the uh, the uh, what you call it the offline uh, mode of the evaluation has been done. We used to visit to the at uh, a particular college and then we analyze all the hundred percent of the seven basic criteria with reference to all we used to give in the report. Now the system has been changed and the assessment accreditation outcome which includes two basis two components. One is the qualitative component, another one is the quantitative component. The qualitative part of the outcome is the pre-team report and the quantitative part of the includes the cumulative grade point average. We call it CGPA, a letter grade and a performance descriptor which will be assessed by through the online. So introducing the system generator scores, SDS with a combination of both online submission of all those seven criteria, which will be evaluated by about 70% and the remaining 30% will be the, the, the visit by the, the field team to the, uh, the particular college or the university physically. So there is a 70 plus 30 percentage system of the assessment in the revised uh, the system of the accreditation and assessment process. So what normally we used to execute is the submit uh, through the, the various format is the number one is the executive summary uh, we have to submit and then here we have to mention about the, the short preamble of the, the main features of the institution we have to submit and then let, second is the criterion wise summary the seven criteria summary on the institutions functioning not more than 250 words for each criteria we have to submit and then we have to identify ourselves through the IQAC, 10 weakness, opportunities, and challenges of the our institution, and then any additional information about the institution other than that one already stated we have to. So overall, conclusive explanation about the, the institution's functioning should be submitted, not more than 5,000 words in the executive summary we have to submit. And second is the profile of the university or college, and third is the extent extended profile of the university or college and fourth is the quality as I mentioned quality indicator framework which includes the quality matrices and Q I mean LM we call the qualitative matrix we call and then quantitative matrix we call as the matrix as we call as the QNM so both we have to give and then the evaluative report of the department and that also we just submit and finally for the data validation uh, data validation through the online we have to submit and the data templates have been provided by the NAC and which will be mainly for evaluating the quantitative matrices. So how oh, I think they have been bifurcated all this the distribution of the matrix. As I mentioned all together the universities whether the autonomous college or the affiliated or country college the criteria is similar all the seven criteria are similar and among that one, the, the key indicators they have identified is the 34 for universities, 34 for, I mean, autonomous college, and 31 for UG uh, college, and 32 for the PG college. And among these, the qualitative matrices uh, in, for university 36, autonomous college is 35, and then the UG college 35, and PG college 36. So these are the qualitative matrix, uh, the uh, the, 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 uh, the parameter we have to submit and then quantitative, quantitative we call the key and M as uh, for university 79, autonomous 72, UG college 58 and PG college 60. So all together total metrics for the evaluation will be universities 115, autonomous college 107 and then UG college 93 and then PG college 96. This is the, the revised the framework which has been given the, the distribution of the matrix across the criteria for the evaluation with reference to the, the February 2020 uh, the guidelines. So the data submitted through the quantitative matrices will be subjected to the validation as I mentioned with the help, with the help of the 
the frost which will be monitored and then tabulated and then again calculated by the NAC itself which is called as the, the data validation and verification we call it as a DVD process and this will be evaluated all the questionnaires have been given and, and according to the format we have to submit and they themselves they will evaluate did the, the document proof I think document proof is very much essential to validate all the, uh, the data in the quantitative matrices and it's all together they will calculate for 70 percent and next for 30 percent the responses to the qualitative matrices will be reviewed by the peer team on site they will visit personally to every institution after the institution clears the, the pre-qualifier the stage and they will be assessed for 30 percent so all together 70 plus 30 will be total pooled and finally the what they will give you the and the weightages based on that they will give the grades and these are the the individual the key indicators how much they will be allocated for everyone altogether the total is the same thousand for all the other university autonomous colleges or affiliated colleges with respect to every i mean individual criteria they distributed for curricular aspects 150 and then teaching learning evaluation 200 research innovation extension 250 and then other the all the other criteria are 100 years so come to the i mean autonomous colleges i mean almost the curricula is same to the university and then teaching learning is 300 more and then research innovation is in 150 and rest of the i mean the key indicators and weightages are the 100 years come to the affiliated colleges with reference to the recent uh, the framework given by the uh, the NAC uh, during February, and they were given the weightage is separated for the affiliated college. Even in the affiliated colleges, they have separated the UG college and PG college. And here, the UG colleges having the research innovation extension 110, and then for the PG college having 120, and then student support and progression they are given 140 for the UG college and 130 for the uh, the the PG colleges and so on and all together the same so these are the the distribution to every uh, the criteria and every criteria wise and then again with the every key indicators key indicator as I mentioned for universities autonomous colleges affiliated and constituent colleges so this will give for all the seven criteria uh, as I mentioned the research. Research has been focused to high to the uh, universities and then the other one is the, uh, the autonomous colleges. So here I would like to mention one point here the, the criteria 2 which is having more for the both UG and PG colleges I think the, the weightages 350 each to that and then autonomous 300 and then universities 200. So here, the, all the UG and PG colleges, they can score more while you are concentrating more of the, the criteria two of the every component. Definitely you will get the three, uh, 350 out of 350 in, in the weightages for the, the criteria for the evaluation. So I think others have been distributed and all to the total score is 1000 each. So based on the scores calculated and the institutional grades and accreditation status have been given. Now, based on the range of the institution cumulative of the point we call the CGPA, based on the weightages in the thousand, they have been given as at the maximum four grade system. So 3.51 grade to 4.00 CGPA. If you get through all the seven criteria wise, both in the 70 plus 30. The system, evaluation system, you will be given a grade of A plus plus. That is the highest grade accredited. And in between 3.26 to 3.50, be A plus accredited. 3.01 to 3.25, A accredited. 2.76 to 3, B plus plus accredited. 2.51 to 2.75, CGPA, and you have a B plus accredited. 2.01 to 2.50 B accredited and 1.51 to 2.00 
because the letter grain will be C aggregated and less than of the 1.50 I think institution is getting D grid which not aggregated status. So these are the different grading system uh, based on the I mean assessment of the various criteria uh, I think in all seven and the NAC will do this grade. So the assessment, the outcome will be the, the peer team report, the qualitative and descriptive assessment, and the overall analysis, recommendations, and then they will give the graphical representation of the based quantitative matrices, and then graphical presentation of the other, uh, the quantitative indicators, and then institutional grade sheet, which is based on qualitative indicators, quantitative indicators, and again the calculation of the student satisfaction survey using the, the existing calculation method. So for calculation of the grade sheet, both the qualitative, quantitative and student satisfaction survey all will be calculated and the assessment will be given. So these are the assessment outcome of the every college or the, the university. So what is the, the impact? So it will generate, the accreditation and assessment will generate more interest and concern about the, and as I mentioned, quality assurance. Quality assurance among the, the stakeholders, students, alumni, and then also the, the parents. And it will, again, uh, this assessment will create better understanding of the quality assurance and the, among the higher education institutions in the country. And then, well, I think it also will uh, trigger the quality assurance activities and it will help in creation of the institutional database, which all will help the other funding and regulatory agencies to take some of the based on the assessment outcome. So these are the, the impacts of the accreditation and assessment. So what the lesson? So we know that the, the national government as very keen in maintaining the standards and the, the quality in every institution. And now we have been competing with the international level of what type of the teaching, learning, and then also the energy environment we have been given and how much resources we have been allocating I mean, every year through the MHRD, I mean, inculcating the, the knowledge of their particular domain of the subjects so we have a lot of lessons so what we have these are the lessons so main one i would like to mention is the assessment institution as a role model our quality is very critical to the effectiveness of its operation so here the involvement of the academia is critical to their acceptance of the external assessment activity by the the NAC. and all together the process are very transparent for that and i think now we have to take care of every institution and it is a responsibility of the every higher education institutions and responsibility of the teachers and responsibility of the, the leadership and the responsibility of the management to bring our Indian higher education system in a high profile and then to take a lead in the entire country uh, as though we have a population of more than 135 crores and bring that our India into a number one and which is equal to the, the global level in the entire arena. So with this, I thank everyone for the, the patient hearing. We must be, we must be the change that we wish to see in the world, according to Mahatma Gandhi. Thank you. Thank you, Varandhavi.